We are here today uh, because we are tracing the review from the Youth Justice Review, which uh, took place in 2011. Unfortunately, we feel that not a lot of progress has been made on the review, and also along with our partner organisations such as Include Youth, the Acro, and the Children's Law Centre, are all coming today to sort of put more emphasis and focus on the review and some of the key findings of that, such as increasing the age of responsibility for criminal actions, and also looking at the disproportionate levels of children in care that are uh, within the justice system. Well, the organisations today work with children and young people on a daily basis, and we know the damaging impact that being in a criminal justice system can have on our young people. So we are basically saying that we need to keep young people out of the system, and we think one of the ways to do that is to make sure we have a really strong early intervention programme in place. So we need to see supports within the community, um, non-justice interventions, so delivered by community and voluntary sector, working with these young people who are dealing with so many issues in their lives and sadly then potentially do come into contact with criminal justice. So we need to work upstream and make sure that we support these young people. Raising the minimum age crime responsibility was one of the main recommendations of the Youth Justice Review and they recommended at that stage it would be raised to at least 12 and then after three years review to raise to 14. We are really disappointed that that recommendation was never even put on the agenda. Raising the minimum age criminal responsibility is fundamental to delivering on all the other recommendations of the Youth Justice Review. At age 10, our minimum age criminal responsibility is one of the lowest in the world. And what it does is criminalise 10 year old children, children before they even reach post primary school, and it criminalises the most disadvantaged children in our society, children from socioeconomically disadvantaged areas children with mental health needs, children with disabilities, children who have been failed by the education system, children who may be homeless, children who are victims of neglect and abuse. What we need to do is to help those children. We don't need to criminalise them. While much has been achieved, there is, as I think the report recognises, still much more to do. The legislative framework for youth justice now looks outdated in a number of key areas and is, in the eyes of many stakeholders, out of step with international standards on children's rights. Foremost among these issues is, as you've already heard, the minimum age of criminal responsibility. Northern Ireland has one of the lowest minimum ages of criminal responsibility in Europe, at only 10 years old. That is why the Youth Justice Review recommended raising the age when it reported 10 years ago and the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child continues to do so now. I am fully supportive of a change in the law. The Minister has a focus on delay in the system um, and that she really recognises how unacceptable that is and that gives me some hope that we will actually start to deal with this wicked issue as we move forward. Um, I suppose I'm more concerned that I heard nothing uh, in relation to criminal records and the impact that lifelong records or, or having uh, things on records for young people as they move into adulthood can have. Um, so I'm concerned that that's something that we're going to have to put some greater focus on to make sure that that, that moves forward um, in the fullness of time. I felt, however, it was a good good to have as many policymakers and stakeholders in the room um, and people had the opportunity to ask questions and to detract from the report and there were none. So I think that that's a very positive move for the report going forward. To conclude, I am hugely grateful for this opportunity to recognise all of the significant progress that has been made over the last 10 years in the youth justice system. This has improved the lives of children and had a positive effect on victims and communities. However, I'm also grateful for the opportunity to talk about the issues that remain. In the months that I have left as Justice Minister, I want to play a positive role in helping to shape how these challenges will be tackled in the months and years that lie ahead. And I want to do that in partnership with you. So thank you very much for the invitation.